Die ICC se T20 vrouw wereldbeker begin die 10 februari en ons het besluit ons om volgens een bykie meer gesels met vrouwe cricketspelers Ek dink ook om net die aandacht te gee aan vrouwsport oor die algeel en ons is volgend bevoorrecht van twee van die vrouwe van die Engelandse cricketspan keir volgend by ons. Dit is natuurlijk Sophia Dankly en Freya Davies wat ons is. Good morning and welcome. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, before we get to the cricket, let's just start <laughs> with South Africa. How have you enjoyed your time here? Yeah, it's been lovely. We've only been here a just week? over a week. Yeah, so um, yeah, still settling in a bit, but it's been really, really good so far. And the rain? I mean, you're covering with the rain. rain. <laughs> the rain. I mean, I don't, I can't, I don't think you're used to it. No. <laughs> know, we thought it was going to be sunny here. Yeah. And it's been raining, but I, can, I must say the coffee here has been exceptional. So really? I've really enjoyed it, yeah. Wow. little coffee hot, hut near where we're staying, and that's been great. Because so. I've been stalking you on Instagram as well. Oh, have you? You, <laughs> you have a bit of a coffee thing there. Yeah, I do like a good coffee art. Mm. little pattern on top, that's what oh. I like. So, yeah, we've had quite a few of those around where we are, so we've been very lucky. <laughs> that's quite nice. Yeah. <laughs> so you are based in Pretoria at the moment, but then going to the Western Cape, going to Stadish. Are you looking forward to Stanbosch? Yeah, we've heard lots of good things about it. I think um, there's potentially a wine <laughs> tour going yeah. on oh. um, if we manage to get a day off training. But, yeah, we've heard lots of good things, so we're really excited. Listen, we have to get into the cricket side of things now, obviously, because that's why you're here. And in 2009, England actually hosted the first ever T20 World Cup. How do you think the game has developed since that first World Cup to where we are now, Sophia? Yeah, it's been massive since then, I think. Well, that's probably, yeah, over 10 years ago now. Um, the women's game has massively exploded. So much more kind of commercial opportunities and different platforms now, so... I think, yeah, it's definitely in the spotlight now, so I'm sure this competition is going to be the biggest ever, I guess. Freya, I have to ask, in 2012, 14 and 18, England was runner-up. <laughs> yeah, do you think you're going to lift the cup <laughs> this year? Yeah, well, we're certainly going for it. I think we've got a really exciting squad and, yeah, they've got every chance of, of lifting that trophy and that's what we plan to do. I know you can't give away too much about <laughs> your secrets now, <laughs> but if we have to, like, just get something from... What do you think makes your team... Such a strong team. What are some of your like strong points as a team? I think probably for us, over the last couple of months, we've really been working on playing really aggressively and just being really brave. And I think trying to go out with the message of trying to inspire and entertain people. Um, you know, you can't control the results sometimes, but you can control yeah. kind of how you go about it. So yeah, we just want to try and really entertain people, and and hopefully that clicks in and, and gets us some big performances. Have you been harassed in South Africa yet by the crowds? Not yet. <laughs> not yet. So that is something that we're lacking in South Africa. There's not, watch out. No, there's, there's not enough people watching mm. women's mm -hmm. cricket in South Africa. Uh, it's not an issue in, in the UK, obviously. Yeah, I think at home the last few years it's really, it's really grown. Um, mm. Things like the 100 have, have really changed the kind of landscape for the women's game. But hopefully tournaments like this will do that over here and... And we can really draw in the big crowds and, yeah, it's always fun playing in front of them. So, yeah. fingers crossed. I was going to ask about the 100 now because in, in Australia you have the big bash. You guys have the 100 and it does really well. And I suppose also as a cricketer, surely you get an opportunity to then refine your skills in those competitions and franchises. Yeah, I think it's a great place to definitely practice for international cricket. And you get some amazing players from around the world coming to England to play in that competition. So, the standard's really high. So definitely put us in good practice for this competition. Who do you think? And I know you think, okay, if our team goes, okay, we're going to lift the trophy, great, but we're going to at least try. Who do you think would be your biggest competition? Um, I guess there's a lot of good teams out there. I think you're kind of hard pushed to ignore Australia. Yeah. Um, they're obviously the current holders of it. Um, but I think... Work like every team has very exciting squads and T20 cricket's so so hit and miss that really it is anyone's game. Yeah, I think that makes it exciting. That also allows the smaller teams, even if we look at the men's T20, um, it's, I always enjoy the fact that a team like the Netherlands, Zimbabwe, all those teams get mm -hmm. to play in 
in the T20 World Cups because I also think that's the only way teams grow is mm -hmm. actually getting exposure to play against your bigger teams and stuff. And I saw Thailand, I think Thailand also recently mm -hmm. became part of the T20 World Cup. And I think that's really exciting and important. If we want a sport to grow, we need to create awareness um, mm -hmm. around the sport, and especially in all countries where, you know, people wake up and go, you know what, I want to also be a cricketer one day mm -hmm. when I grow up. And I think it's T20 quite right. It's such a nice thing. And it, it creates that atmosphere and it creates a platform where women in sport especially can go, you know what, we can actually make a living from this. Mm -hmm. Well, and being second in the rankings, I mean, it's a nice place to be. I mean, if you lose it, you're still okay, you know, in the final. <laughs> if you lose the final, you're still fine. Ah. But if you win the final, I mean, that's impressive. Yeah, yeah. So I think it's a nice place second. Uh, am, I, am I wrong? <laughs> I don't think we'd be super happy if we lost, put it that yeah. way. Yeah. But yes, yes, I wouldn't expect it. Yeah. <laughs> um, Sophia, I want to get to you. You made your debut in 2018 against Bangladesh. Um, what was it like, that moment where you like, first get your first cap for England? Yeah, so special, I think. You always kind of dream about it, what it's going to be like, what it's going to feel like, but I think nothing ever comes t close to the actual, the actual moment, and I was just really lucky to have my mum there. We were in the West oh. Indies, so she flew out and she watched, and she's obviously been the person that kind of driven me to all my practices when I was younger and stuff, so, yeah, that was pretty special. Don't we always forget that? We forget, mm. like, we, there's some parent or grandparent or aunt or uncle or someone that had to keep doing the driving to yeah. and from and supporting and throwing the balls until you're arm yeah. you can't be your arm anymore. But there's Definitely. a whole support network that we sometimes forget about. Mm. And it's not all glitz and glam. And I think that's quite important to Definitely. realize. Sometimes you have, like, a pain. You've got a pain in your ankle. You've fallen weird. Your fingers, something wrong. But you still have to push through it and play mm. through it. And I think sometimes people forget that when we look at sports. So what do you think? Yeah, definitely. I think it's easy to see what we do now and think that's what cricket's always looked like for us. But actually, yeah, there's hundreds of hours spent with our parents in cars driving to mm. who knows where <laughs> in England. And I mean, we played against each other since we were yeah, probably like 11, probably yeah. 12. Wow. So, yeah, you, you put in a lot of hard yards as, as a kid and our, our parents are. Incredible, and we're so lucky that lots of them actually come out on tour with us. So there's going to be a, a right little gang of parents, I think, <laughs> by the end of this World Cup, which will be so lovely just to have their support. And yeah, that's really brilliant. Afray, you made your debut for Sussex at a very young age, 14. <laughs> um, and I wanted to know what is it like that pressure at such a young age to have to perform at a certain level? Yeah, I think, I mean, it was scary, but I think almost at that age, I was just so naive to it. I just loved playing cricket. Yeah. And that was just another another team, another group of girls to get to do that with. Um, although it was quite daunting. I think we had three or four England players at the time who I was like, oh, my God, dude, you're amazing. <laughs> this is the coolest thing ever. Um, but, yeah, I think maybe a bit of naivety, just kind of run in and bowl and hope. <laughs> <laughs> Sophia, your first century against South Africa, mm -hmm. <clears throat> you think um, when you meet them again, the same's going to happen? <laughs> well, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, the, I don't think we've not got South Africa in our group stages, so if we do play against them, it'll be the semi-final or final, so Probably it'll the be final, a big game. <laughs> That's what we're hoping yes, for. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, that'd be great. I'd love to score 100 in the semi-final or final, so <laughs> fingers crossed. <laughs> mm. That's nice. Do you focus only on your batting? or Because uh, uh, I heard a little bird whisper in my ear <laughs> that if I asked you, um, you would probably say, no, 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 you want to bowl more to so you're a good bowler. Yeah, I'd love to bowl more. I think <laughs> bowling something I kind of do that as a part-time skill, um, but I definitely keep training with it and practicing and bowl a little bit in games here and there, but I'd love to bowl more in games, so if the opportunity comes, you know, I'll be ready, but we'll, we'll see. <laughs> see how the team goes. They probably don't need me, but, you know, I'm here if they do. <laughs> you see. There we go. Who's the, the hardest bowler you've faced that you really struggled with? Who do you think is the best bowler you've faced? It's a great question. I think um, Shabana Mishmael, who plays for South Africa, she bowls pretty quick and, and she bowls some good bounces, so she's definitely been quite challenging in the past and she's very skillful with the way she bowls. So, yeah, I'll definitely say she's out there. Ooh. Um, I'm going to afraid I'm going to get to you now about which batter it's most difficult to batter. I also want to speak about your law degree, which is very <laughs> interesting. <laughs> yeah. But all of that will happen after the little ad break. 
Welkom terug. Nou, dit is amper tijd voor die ICC T20 vrouwen wereldbeker bij die 10e februari begin. En ik heb vroeger gezien, ons is bevoorrecht natuurlijk dat ons twee van die spelers uit die Engeland span bij ons keir. Dit is Sophia Dunkley en Freya Davies, wat volgend die is. Freya, I want to get back to you. So, you have a law degree and I wanted to know how you balanced the studying with the crickets. Yeah, it was a bit of a juggling act. Um, I actually ended up taking a year out of cricket to wow. uh, my final year of my degree just because it's quite a lot. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah there's, a lot, there's a lot of hours that, that go into that, but it was something that I was very keen on, on having under my belt because sport can be a very kind of yeah. fickle career. And, yeah, I mean, I, so, I haven't used it in the last few years, I can tell you that. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I'm glad I have it and, yeah, I really enjoyed studying it. Would part of that be because, like you said, you know, sports and, and women's sport wasn't always at a point where women got contracts like ECB contracts. Even if I look at our South African sports women and I look at our netball or hockey or even our cricketers, you know, they weren't necessarily always fully like employed. They had to do like a side job and then still train and whatnot. Would part of your decision to also go study be at a point where you weren't quite sure what's going to happen with contracts in women's sports? Yeah, 100 percent. Like when I was a kid growing up, this as a job just wasn't yeah. it, it wasn't an option. It was never it was a hobby. It was something I loved doing, but it was never what I would have said as a kid that I was yeah. going to do as my career. So, yeah, I certainly come from the generation where we we had to have something else because we never knew if this was going to be what we could do. But now we're so fortunate that we can just do this and travel the world and play cricket. And yeah, we're so lucky for that. That's travel really the amazing. world. Mm -hmm. I want to find out, just quick travel the world questions. Last beach you've been on, impressive, nice beach. Uh, mm. Barbados. Ah, yeah. yours? Mama Barbados too. <laughs> Yeah. Nice. 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 Fortunately, don't end up on her team, and um, <laughs> she is probably one of the toughest people to bowl at. So, I'm very glad that she's on my team for this this competition. So I have to I have to be honest. You know, growing up, and we always here in South Africa, you know, you have posters against your walls or posters in your suitcase. And mine was never of like a rock star or a movie star. I had a cricketer mm. in it everywhere. I, I can't imagine <laughs> that. I cannot imagine that. So my like childhood hero was Stephen Fleming. Mm -hmm. um, Absolutely loved him since I was in primary school. Mm -hmm. Later on, became Mike Hussey. I should probably mention a South African play in there too, but Mike <laughs> and Stephen Fleming, that was kind of the two. Who were your cricketing heroes growing up? Whether they were like played for the men's team or the women's teams, who were your cricketing heroes growing up? Mm. I think, well, mine was Jimmy Anderson. Um, oh. I mean, he's still playing, yeah. so he'd probably not be too <laughs> impressed that I, <laughs> I said that. But yeah, I think men's cricket was, was our bread and butter as, yeah. as kids. And... Um, yeah, I think I remember going to watch the women's team when I was about 12, but that was the first I'd really, really known of them. So a lot of our idols were men, but I mean, Jimmy Anderson is a very good, That's very a good, good choice. choice. <laughs> very good choice. Um, I, I played for Middlesex when I was younger, and we had a player called Beth Morgan who played for us, um, and she played for England at the time. But I was lucky enough to kind of have her as my coach when I was under 13. So yeah, she was pretty starstruck. Oh, around wow. Beth and she was, yeah, a great girl, so yeah, that's nice. That really is quite amazing to hear, you know, mm. you've got these people that you can look up to and you're going to go, you know what, I can also be this a person. What do you guys do when you don't play cricket, when you've got some free time? <laughs> that's a great question. <laughs> <laughs> um, depends, so on tour, a lot of things can go on, so definitely when we're in South Africa, lucky to be in such a great country, lots of things to explore and do, so like yeah. we go to Stellenbosch, Hope you do a nice wine tour because I hear that is you know very good there. <laughs> see Cape Town, you know, go up Table Mountain, go yeah. and see the penguins. Oh wow! <laughs> All those kind of things. Then, well, then we spend a lot of time socialising, going for coffee. Um, but you probably have way more interesting hobbies than I do. Uh, <laughs> there's a group of us that are quite into golf. Yeah, yeah. Um, a couple of nice courses. Yeah. Have you played golf here yet? Yeah, a couple of times. Um, yeah, we've had some some lovely little rounds. Do you remember the courses? Oh, now you're testing me. A strange name. Wood, strange name. Wood Hill? Wood, Wood Hill, yes. yes. Yeah. Yes, we yes. played there the other day. That was lovely. Yeah, lovely. Um, but yeah, there's a few of us that like to 
to go and take our anger out on golf balls every now and again. <laughs> <laughs> so I try that every now and then, not very successfully. Yeah, no, um, well, I think some of us are in the same <laughs> <laughs> Some are better than others. But, but it's still a nice thing to do. It's nice yeah. to just get out there and stuff. And I think what is also nice, and both you also mentioned now, when you're in Cape Town, there are things that you can do. Mm -hmm. Like uh, Pierre mentioned, really nice golf courses in mm. Cape Town. There's also a lot of outdoor activities if you want to climb Lion's Head or you want to go up Table Mountain, mm -hmm. the wine tasting, I think both of we, us would recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> but, but Lion's Head's quite a nice place. I mean, you just yep. go hike up Lion's Head, early morning, it's lovely. Oh, yeah. nice. Yeah. Hear that in okay. mind. Um, we're going to have to do some quick fire questions. Yes. Um, where we just get to know you slightly better. First thing <laughs> that comes to mind. Okay. Are you ready? Cool. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. Uh, would you say you're an introvert or an extrovert? Extrovert. Extroverts, right? Uh, what kind of music is on your phone now? On on your your app? Uh, I listen to a lot of like acoustic, slowed down kind of. Oh, slowed yeah, down stuff. Music, yeah. yeah. Some would say depressing. <laughs> oh, you mean like I, uh, that I, slow? Down. I'm absolutely not allowed to put my phone on the playlist, but yeah, oh, wow. lots of acoustic Psy stuff. Not, not psych up, psych down. No, no, yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Uh, on holiday, favorite spot. Favorite spot, beach. Beach. Oh. Do you mean like what country? Yes, yes. Oh. Any, place, any, place. Any, any, any favorite beach place? Uh, Caribbean. Hey? Eh? Caribbean. Caribbean. Oh. Why always? I want to go there. I've never been there. <laughs> I know. Uh, uh, if, if, if there's no diet and there's no you know, dietitian watching <laughs> you, favorite food? Um, pasta, probably. <gasps> what what mm. kind of pasta, though? Anything. <laughs> yeah, I'm really honest. Honest. <laughs> uh, uh, favorite type of movie? Action, horror, rom com? Rom com. Rom com. Gobby. Yeah, well. Uh, uh, a, a, a guilty pleasure. Something. Oh, what? Yeah. The film? In, yeah, in, no, no, anything. anything. Any. Oh, oh there's a. <laughs> There's a TV soap at home called Coronation Street, and I like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love Celebrity that. crush. If you, if, if you, ever, yeah, well, oh. I, you don't have to really name, well, yes, name. Thank yeah, you very I'm much. Like yeah. <laughs> oh, actually, only because me and Sophie were talking about him the other day, Taron Egerton, the actor. He, he's, he's in quite a lot yeah. of films. Yeah. Kingsman. In the Elton oh, John oh, movie. Oh, oh, he's, he's actually in the Elton John movie, but he looks slightly different yes. in that one. <laughs> <laughs> Pit Peeves. Pet peas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, a really runny poached egg. <laughs> <laughs> Only can I have one this morning, Pet Peas. Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. Uh, 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 I love that. What do you do to calm down? In uh, some uh, uh, and to instantly calm down, some kind of activity that you do. What do you do? Oh God! I think if I had the answer to that, I'd probably be a better cricketer. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, you you need the the. But, but if you want to calm down, um, what do you do? There's a few of us that there's normally a guitar on tour. A few of us play a little bit of a guitar, and wow. yeah, we'll have a little bit of a. a wow. Yeah. That's really fun. nice. Nice. Um, it has been so lovely having the two of you on our yellow couch. Um, if you have any message for the South African public to go out there and support the T20 World Cup, what would it be? You uh, take it away, <laughs> <laughs> um, Just, I, I think, the get behind this tournament and it would be so good to see so many people at all of the games and hopefully we put on some really exciting cricket and, yeah. It will be an interesting tournament, that's for sure. <laughs> oh, wow. We are really looking forward to it. Best of luck for the whole tournament. Um, we hold thumbs. We're hoping that you would meet the Proteas in the final. I'll go as far as that. <laughs> that is it. I'll, that's it. That is it. See you in the final. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for the visit. Thanks, Thanks for having us. This is Natila. You heard two prachtige vrouwen from the Engelandse span, who was on the ground for the ICC T20 Vrouw Wereldbeker.